We're with Michelle Malkin. So the first obvious question, how has Colorado been treating you so far? I, we love it. We, we feel like we've come home. Um, and Which is a funny thing because uh, we don't have family and we really didn't have any friends when we decided to uproot ourselves from Washington, D.C. And, and move to Colorado Springs. But we have found uh, a family. And I, I use the analogy of Gulf Gulch uh, when, I, when I spoke at the Independence Institute a couple of months ago. But I really feel that way, that we've um, been embraced by people who share our values. And I'm not just talking about our moral and social values, but um, fiscal conservative principles and, um, and in particular, education. And I've, I've told many people that one of the top reasons we picked Colorado was because of the, the, the incredible charter school system. And, um, and it's something that we have uh, benefited from greatly. I have a, an eight-year-old daughter and a five-year-old son, and they go to a wonderful charter school in Colorado Springs. Um, and to see parental choice in action and in reality uh, and to be a part of it, um, it, it it's been an amazing blessing. Um, so I, I think this is, it's, it, we've finally come home. It's a place where we're going to set down our roots. And I can't tell you how wonderful it is to breathe fresh air, literally and figuratively. Um, we were seeking that escape from the Beltway Swamp, and we, we seized the opportunity, and we're glad. Well, welcome. I wasn't sure any of us would be able to get through the snow to come to Chicago, <laughs> but, but we made it. Um, so you're here supporting the Sam Adams Alliance. What do you see as the value of the organization, and why do you want to support, come out and support them? I think that the Sam Adams Alliance um, has been a visionary and um, a pioneer in using the Internet to increase liberty. Uh, and I think that they understand uh, much more than a, a lot of, unfortunately, a lot of Beltway groups and, and old school philanthropists, the need to arm citizen journalists and citizen activists with, um, with Internet tools. And, um, you know, I have a lot in common with uh, a lot of the award winners in that I cut my own teeth um, on uh, public records issues, transparency issues, and, uh, and dealing with the intransigence of uh, city and local bureaucracies uh, that were protecting their own turf and uh, lying to the public about uh, public expenditures and government expenditures. And, you know, there was the old school way of trying to hold them accountable, working from within um, the dinosaur media. But um, I think that, that one of the things that has been completely exposed is the myth that only newspapers um, can do the job, that somehow they are irreplaceable uh, and, um, and, um, and, and that they, they they're the only ones credentialed to be able to do the work, the kind of work that you were doing, the kind of work that uh, a number of the uh, organizations that you cited, the People's Press Collective, uh, Free Colorado, and, and, and all of the wonderful um, websites that have come to discover uh, that are Colorado-based. And, um, you know, most of my focus has been on the national level since I, since I left my metropolitan newspapers. I work for the Seattle Times and the Los Angeles Daily News. Um, but it's so vital you know, what you're doing and, and what these other state and local based organizations are doing. And I think that they get short shrift uh, from the conservative movement in Washington. Well, you've had some great success writing about the tea parties. Um, I had a question about that, and that'll be the last one. Um, there's been some economic indicators that the economy might be coming around slowly. Do you think that if that, if, if that, as there's recovery, do you think that will take the wind out of the sails of the Tea Party movement? Or do you think it can be transformed into a deeper sort of um, freedom movement over the long haul? Um, well, on the first question, I think that whatever uh, glints of sunshine that we see are transitory. I think that fundamentally uh, our economy has been totally trashed. Um, and, you know, it was George Bush who proudly declared that he abandoned free market principles to save the free market. Uh, and the consequences of that are long term. Um, so whatever turnarounds there are, whatever illusory profits the banks are now claiming, um, I, I, I think will dissipate very quickly. Um, and I think that we'll start to see this, um, especially come summertime, uh, you know, there are just a lot of signs 
that we are not turning the corner yet. Um, people think that the housing market uh, is going to turn around soon. It's not. You know, it's not just the subprime crisis. It's the prime crisis. It's the all-day crisis. Uh, so we're going to be in deep duty for a long time. Um, that said, even if there were a, turn, a short-term turnaround, I do believe that uh, the, the, the Tea Party movement can be transformed into something more than just protesting um, the immediate impact of the stimulus and uh, the generational debt that we're being thrown into. Because my sense uh, is that a lot of these grassroots activists are in it for the long haul, and they weren't just complaining about higher taxes or, or bigger spending. They're, they are fundamentally concerned about the lack of accountability in government. We appreciate your time. Oh, thanks a lot.